troops who got there pulled down Mussolini's flag and above the emblem on the base they be respect. Scrappy though this outpost of Italian authority may seem. And when it fell, Imperial... This flagon of Chianti wine was the basis of another party the Italians didn't have. And the clean-up by the Springboks included an electrically operated braid or gun, which rather resembled a plough and apparently was used like one. Here is a further batch of Italian donations to South Africa's war effort. Ammunition, including clips of quick-firing shells, interested a brigadier. And yet another trophy was this Italian armoured lorry. A burst of Bren gun bullets killed the enemy driver. The typically Axis habit of abusing the Red Cross was demonstrated again. These bullet holes nearly killed both the wounded in the ambulance and its driver. Troublesome Italian bonder tribesmen were captured by... Recently, a certain Mr. McAllister Smith called at Air Force headquarters in Salisbury and asked the price of a Spitfire. A surprised officer told him, and this is what he did. He just wrote out a check for a Spitfire. Later, he came back. Spitfires, he said, had risen in price. So he wrote out another check. It was no trouble at all. Then he returned to the lonely Gatuma gold mine that had brought him the fortune he was so eager to spend in the defense of freedom. Sergeant George Davies of Johannesburg, looking for landmines, was first in. And here are the first pictures of another town captured by the Springboks. A ship sunk by the Italians close in shore was another example of the celebrated scuttle policy. Only here took possession. Flotsam from the sea were valuable stores washed ashore from the wreck after the Italians had fled. And was up in one of our fighters as soon as the camp had fallen to take these first aerial pictures of the war in East Africa. Below are huge Italian storage dumps. This is what the East African bush war looks like to any rear gun. Our cameraman came down to land on a bush aerodrome and was just in time to meet the boys of the South African Air Force whose exploits earned special mention in the House of Commons and from General Wavell. Among them was Captain Jack Frost, who recently gained the DFC. He hated being photographed. It's not looking so good, but it was full of interesting gadgets. Captain Frost finished his morning's flip over enemy territory. The fighters he shot down on that famous day when, single-handed, he tackled a formation of five enemy machines and shot down four. A couple of gunners showed exactly how it happened. Flew home with four up and one to play. Our South African airways have contributed a powerful striking force. Each Within shooting distance of the Italian field batteries, transport lorries were wheel to wheel with battle whetted armoured cars when the Springboks cleaned up El Gobwin. Our exclusive cameraman was there with them and he found that every transport driver was a hero. Field ambulances picked up casualties while firing was still going on. Keeping in shore to Kismayo after the town had fallen, our cameraman, Meadows Warfront cameraman, arrived in an Arab Dow that they could only run. Springbok armoured column to enter it, and he sent these first pictures of their triumphant arrival. And here's Ahmadu, also captured by the Springboks. Uniform formation, wings away, escorted by... And we can be proud of the Springboks who man them. But here he is. And here is one... Here's number two of Jack Frost's score, by popping off these two Caproni bombers. The Springboks have built these narrow shelters in the sand because behind the sand dunes are the attacks and from the bush were these three Italian prisoners and what decent food looked like. The Springboks. After questioning by our intelligence men, they were put to the mischief. 
The residency at Afmadu was an important capturist of the Springboks of that first column. Did another one.